What's up squidgy slingers and water fed pole wiggling wagglers. Today we're having a look at the N-Light carbon composite pole, using it for some low level traditional work. This one in particular is a really nice little nifty one at 1.6 meters long. So for all low level commercial or residential work, this is really, really nice, light, fast, strong. So especially for maintenance cleans, which what this is today, it's all maintenance work. So there's some dust, spider webs, things like that to remove. So I'm gonna show you using this pole today, along with some other tools and how I would get this job done on a maintenance clean. So let's get on with it. So the squeegee I tend to use is the Mormon Accelerator. Now this one is a precision tool, so I'll have nothing left to wipe around the glass when using this tool because it's got these blue end clips which reduce all that solution down to zero on the glass. So the Mormon Accelerator tool is on the Unger end light pole. Now to be able to use this, you will need the traditional end cone adapter. Okay, so I'll put a link in the description below to this as well. It's sort of recently came to light and knowledge in the industry that this is now available. So I'll pop the link in the description below to a supplier, you can get it in the United Kingdom, but just type in N light adapter and hopefully you should find it using your search engine. But yes, the N light carbon composite, I really like it nice and strong. So we're gonna get cracking with this job. Now, because it's got the Unger N cone on here, I'm gonna take the attachment off there for the squeegee. And in my back holster here, we have the Maker Handy Sleeve. I'll bring that up on screen now for you. This is the six inch version. So what I use this for is for putting a cloth over the top of it. And that sort of military grade Velcro holds your microfiber cloths really nicely on that little six inch T-bar. Okay, so just popping the cloth. It's a clean cloth over that six inch T-bar. And this is what we're gonna use to clean our frames. Now, if this was a first clean or it was really dirty, I would much prefer to use my ladders and get up nose to glass. But because it's a maintenance clean, it's just reducing dust and spider webs, getting rid of that kind of thing. This is perfectly adequate. So we're gonna pop that onto the end cone, on the Unger end cone. All right, so that's ready to go. And then what I also like to do is just get my applicator, my window cleaning washer. Now this is quite wet. So I'm just gonna dampen the cloth down and that'll just help remove any dirt, spider droppings, anything like that, and cobwebs. You'll find if it's slightly damp, it will work much, much better than a dry cloth. Okay, so what I'll sometimes do as well, if the frame has a bit of a, shall we say, a shape at the top, you can adjust the angle adapter like so to get around that shape, but these ones are all pretty much flat. There's some air vents at the top of the frames on most of the windows but the, other than that, they're pretty flat and easy to clean with the frame cleaner. So I'm just gonna leave that straight for now. And what I basically go around and do is just get rid of the spider webs like this. Now that damp cloth is working really nicely. Just get on top of that air vent. Sometimes the uh, spiders like to do their business on the uh, frames and the air vents. So you'll, you'll see little white or brown droppings, little spots on the framework and that is your spider droppings but they come off nicely with a damp cloth so that is our frame nice and clean and wiped so very simply i just take the attachment off of the pole and then put that back in its holster grab my mormon accelerator okay so i've dunked that in the bucket of water all right that's all that there is and then using some dish soap put a little bit of dish soap onto my wet applicator ready to wash the window. It's in 25 degrees at the moment. As a rule of thumb, anything over head height, I normally have in 25 degrees on the accelerator handle, unless I'm very close to the window, maybe I've got restricted space, then I would put it in 40 degrees. But 25 is fine for here because I'm not very restricted behind me. I've got plenty of space to stand back a little bit. So it's just getting that correct angle on the glass so that the squeegee will work properly and be at the right angle. So just rubbing that soap in. Now this is a very, very hot day today. There's a heat wave just now where we're getting temperatures very close to the likes of Australia, somewhere between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius at the moment in the UK. Um, but I'm still using the same soap solution I normally would, soap on the applicator and uh, just a saturated washer. So it does work in the heat as well. 
you've just got to be a little bit quicker in getting it off the glass. But as you can see, it works perfectly fine, no problem at all. If you sort of mess around a little bit and you're quite slow, then yes, your solution will dry out, especially if it's close to 40 degrees Celsius, you will need to be relatively quick. So what we'll do is we'll go around and do all the tops first, and then all the lower panes I can actually reach by hand. So we're just going to do all the stuff I can't reach with the end light pole, and then drop down and do the hand work after that. So what I normally do as well is if I've got a little, say, a cluster or an area of windows, rather than chopping and changing tools between each window, I'll dust all the frames in this area, shall we call it, first, and then switch to my squeegee tool to then do the glass. And it saves you just chopping and changing tools. Now, if you're wearing two bucket on a belts like I do, my left-hand side one has got my hand washing applicator. And the right hand side one, well, you can see that is empty at the moment, but that comes in handy for holding on to my pole tool there while I'm doing my dusting. So we're going to grab onto our maker handy sleeve here with the damp cloth, put that on the Unger end light. Now that is something that I'm hoping to see a little bit better of in the future is a decent frame cleaner. This one, although it's quite good, it's still fairly bulky. So if you've got any little narrow bits to get into, this frame cleaner is not so good at getting into narrow spaces. So hopefully in the future, somebody will come up with something that uh, can get into those little nooks and crannies. All right, so we're gonna just dust the top of here like we did with the other window. And these frames come up really nicely with a damp cloth. You can really see all that dirt and dust lifting. And then this one. So just do all those areas that I can't reach by hand. Now, normally in videos, what I tend to do is slow down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I can also focus on what I'm saying and what I'm doing in the video as well. So before you ask, is that the speed you normally go? No, I normally go quicker when it's not uh, doing a video. But uh, so I can concentrate on what I'm doing, slowing down just a little bit. All right, so putting this into our 25 degrees, like so and just wash that window down. So I'm cutting along the top, do our top edge first, do the sides, and then fill the middle in. Now for some reason, this accelerator handle is quite squeaky. I don't know why. Um, I also had one of the Mormon Fugu Flick pad washers break on me this morning. It wasn't very old, but the stitching for the clip came apart, so that's now gone in, in the bin, because I cannot be bothered to sew it, and I should not have to sew it. It's only a couple of uses old, and uh, it's already broken. So a bit poor show from Mormon on the quality front there, but hey ho, what can you do? But fortunately I had another one as a backup, so I wasn't completely stuck. I was on a commercial job with it when it broke, but it's one of those things. All right, so, that's the top dusted and all the glass has been squeegeed. There's nothing left to wipe on the glass itself because I'm using that precision squeegee. So all that's left to do is just to wipe up the bottom of that framework. And you can reach that actually by hand like so. And then just do the underside. And by putting just a couple of fingers inside of the cloth, you can get right into those little nooks and crannies on these sash and case windows. No problem at all. So that just leaves all the hand height stuff to do. Now, one thing I do like about the end light pole as well is the angle adapter. It's really strong. So unlike a lot of water-fed pole angle adapters and traditional angle adapters, a lot of them can be very flimsy. So when you put pressure on them, sometimes they can start clicking backwards or just being very, very flexible and moving around when you put a fair bit of pressure on. But the Unger team have really sort of designed this quite well, actually. It's quite sturdy, quite hard. I mean, I'm gonna push that as hard as I can. And it's just not moving. It's just not moving. I mean, you could really push hard on that and it doesn't uh, move between the different teeth in the uh, angle adapter itself. So that's really good. It's just very sturdy all around. That's what I do like about this pole. Very, very sturdy. But, uh, and I use a water-fed pole, which is the Unger end light as well. And I've got a couple of traditional poles, which are all Unger end lights as well. I used to use the Phantoms, but I found them to be a little bit heavier, a bit more flimsy, and they bent a little bit more than these one. The carbon in this is really, really good. Very, very strong. So this doesn't flex as much as the Phantom poles and Gardener poles, I've had them as well. Um, there's not many poles I haven't had, to be honest, but very, very happy with these ones. Really good for water-fed and traditional. 
And um, like I said in my last video, this has a sort of oval shape to it. So the way I like to do it, um, it kind of comes down to a point at one end and it's curved on the other side. So I like to use the curved side that goes into the palm of my hand and then the tapered bit goes into my fingertips. Okay, so that's the way I like to use it. Otherwise, if I use it the other way around, I find I can get a sore hand. So I don't like the uh, sort of tapered bit of the pole shape going into the uh, palm of my hand. And that's not very comfortable for me and I think some other people have found the same thing. So that is the framework de-dusted, cobweb free. So we're just gonna change over to the accelerator now. So that's what I like about this tool is you can chuck on water fed, you can chuck on traditional dusters, whatever you want. You can have one pole do everything if you like. Um, but I mean, I like this, having this small collapse length just for, well, this kind of low level work and internals as well. It's really, really good. So just dunking our accelerator into the bucket again, put a little bit of soap on there. And uh, despite the high heat, it is working a treat. I'm just using the um, Unger Green Power Rubber as well. I used to use Etere rubber, but uh, I found that the Unger Green Power Rubber outperformed it, outlasted it, and uh, it glides really good on it as well. So, so if you hear any squeaking, that is actually coming from the accelerator, not the rubber. It's the, um, see? There you go. <laughs> Squeaky accelerator. My other ones don't do that, but this one does. And I had one of my accelerator handles today as well, not uh, locking properly. I was trying to have it in fixed mode and it kept switching into swivel mode. So that was a little bit annoying. So Mormon have kind of annoyed me this morning. <laughs> well, the tools anyway, but what can you do? It's the only precision tools on the market that are actually good at doing what they say on the tin. So hence why I still use them. Right, there we go, boom, done. Right, and then we could just low level wipe this stuff. Just like that. So just getting rid of all those spider webs in there and spider droppings and things, you know. And then I can just use my hand tools for the bottom bit. So you can get quite quick at doing this, especially when you're not making a video. One of the alternatives you can do, rather than swapping between tools, is to have your frame cleaner on another pole that you have, and then have your glass cleaner on this pole. For me, now with this setup, I actually just like to change between the accelerator and my frame cleaner, and just keep my frame cleaner in this loop on the back here. I think it's an Etere twin holster, I think this one is. Uh, it's done me a long time, material twin holster very, very durable. So that's what I use and I keep my little six inch squeegee and my frame cleaner just behind me there and I can just swap between them as and when needed. If you're doing high level pole work, it's the same method that you would with low level. You can either put your frame cleaner on first, give the frames all going over, lower the pole down and change it over to your glass cleaner or you can have two poles on the go and extend them as long as it's not windy, obviously. You don't want that wind blowing your pole down but as long as it's safe to do so, you could have one pole up as your frame cleaner and one as your glass cleaner and go between the two different poles to get your work done. If you're by yourself, that is. Otherwise, if you've got two of you or more, 
You can get one doing the frames and one person doing the glass. I've seen some people doing that. Whatever works for you. But if you want to try a different pole, maybe you've had a gardener pole or a phantom pole or something else, and you want to try something a little bit different, different shape and different feel entirely to a lot of other poles, then give the Unger N light a try. I've really enjoyed using it, really like it. Like I say, I use it for water fed, and I've got a couple of different sizes for traditional use, and then this cracking little small one for doing low level and tight spaces or indoors this is really good for doing internal window cleaning as well so if you're looking for a good traditional window cleaning pole this is a really good option the younger end light so hopefully you've picked up something from today's video maybe a little tip a little nugget and remember to check out the tradmanacademy.com if you need traditional window cleaning training all done online so see you in the description below thank you very much for watching much appreciated you take care and bye for now